Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. Well, I'm back with another technology update and I've got a lot of really interesting things to cover today. I'd like to start off with the DJI Mini SE because there's a lot of conversations on the channel about that particular drone. I actually did an overview clip of it a couple of weeks back where I went through the specifications and where I thought it fit in the marketplace, fully expecting DJI to release that drone pretty quickly. It turns out that DJI has decided they're only going to release the DJI Mini SE in certain markets. And I think it's a marketing decision more than it is a technology decision where DJI is looking at the markets where they compete and maybe the drones that they've got out, the Mini 2 and the Mini, are too expensive and they needed to come up with a solution that they could release into those markets that was less expensive. So I'm doing my best to get my hands on one. I've got a lot of contacts in China and I've actually got one of those contacts walking into a DJI store there in China, putting it in a box and shipping it to me here in the US. Now, you may already be thinking, Rick, why are you having the drone shipped to you in New Jersey when we're not gonna be able to buy it in the US? Well, I love technology, right? So I understand what the Mini does. I understand what the Mini 2 does. I really wanna see where this Mini SE fits into the picture. Now, a few things I will tell you that I know already, I predicted when I did that original clip that it would come with the older Gen 1 style controller. You guys know that one. It's the smaller black one where the arms fold out in the bottom. And everybody gave me a lot of grief about that saying, oh no, no, it's coming with the Gen 2 controller. Well, it turns out it's coming with the Gen 1 controller. A couple other things they changed on the drone. The original Mini had a micro USB charging port on it. The Mini 2 had a USB-C uh, charging port on it. It turns out that the brand new SE will have a USB charging port on it. And I'll be interested to see if the controller has a USB-C on it as well, or if that's still a micro USB, because that's going to make it really interesting for charging. But anyway, I'm going to do a full review of that as soon as I get my hot little hands on it. I'll do some comparisons with the original Mavic Mini and the Mini 2, just so you understand what that drone can do. And the reason I'm doing that, in addition to the fact that I love looking at new technology, is because I think eventually... DJI will release a brand new Mini 3, which will have a lot of cool features in it, probably pretty close to what the Xeno Pro is going to look like, the Mini Xeno Pro. Um, maybe crash avoidance, a better camera, whatever. But the Mini 3 will be released, and I think at that point, you may actually see the Mini SE released in the U.S. So I want to get ahead of that curve. But anyway, stay tuned to the channel for that. All right, the next one I want to talk about is the new Parrot AI. There's an Anafi AI that was released by Parrot. I think it was announced it hasn't actually been released yet, but it's a radically new design for a drone. And Parrot's known for that. I mean, they're a French company. They're very creative. So if you look at all their drones, anybody builds a drone, Parrot's got to build one that's a little bit different. So the last one, to me, looked like um, sort of a sewing needle, uh, kind of a flight. It was a drone that folded out like this. It looked very insect light. I'm talking about the Anafi. And I thought that drone was really clever in their design. It was lightweight. It didn't make a lot of noise and it flew like a dream. So I fly that drone all the time and I love it. Well, this new one looks a little bit more like a praying mantis. I think they actually use that image in their, in their advertisements. And what they've done, again, creatively, is they've got crash avoidance on it. But unlike the other drones that have sensors all around the outside that are looking for obstacles around the drone, this one has a dual set of cameras on the front. So it's got one primary camera where it's going to actually take your video and your photos. It's got two other cameras that, depending on where you point the drone, these cameras will move around and they'll actually triangulate on images to avoid those when it's flying because there's no point in tracking behind you if you're heading this direction. So Parrot figured, let's just point the cameras for obstacle avoidance in the direction we're going. So if you're going sideways and you turn, the camera's going to sort of go up like this and it's going to capture that side thing. So I'm going to have to take a look at that when it comes out. Now, I don't think it's set up for the commercial, I mean, for the consumer space. It looks like a very expensive drone. So I think it's really geared more to the commercial market. But if they drop the price or if I get a chance to get my hands on a test one, I'll bring it in and check it out. Another cool thing they've built into it, and I predicted this a couple of years back, was that their connection topology between the controller and the drone isn't done over Wi-Fi. Now, the drone actually has a SIM card in it where it connects up to a 4G network, and its connection topology is over that 4G network. Now, let that sink in for a second. You buy that drone, you've got to have a SIM card, you've got to have a data package. There's going to be a lot of data exchange going over that network, so it's going to be an expensive drone to fly. But more importantly, that completely eliminates the limitations that Wi-Fi puts on that drone as far as how far it can fly. DJI's done some amazing things with their OcuSync technology to allow you to fly a lot further over Wi-Fi. But if you connect up to a 4G network and hit a tower, you can fly pretty much as far as the battery will take you. So I think you're going to start seeing some other drones using that 4G technology. And again, I predicted that I think two years ago when I said... Don't be surprised if you start seeing drones released that have SIM cards in them that can actually connect up to a network. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. 
Another core technology that I want to talk about, and this is something we've been doing a lot of research into because we release a lot of new products every year, and I've been working on a couple of home chargers, a 20 watt or a 65 watt that you can use for charging your devices because there are chargers on the market today that are very confusing as far as what kind of power output they have, what kind of connections you can make to them. So you'll see us releasing two chargers pretty soon. There'll be a 20 watt charger that will have dual ports on it. It'll be a USB-A and a USB-C charger that'll do power delivery 3.0. It'll also do quick charge 3.0. So no matter what kind of phone you've got, you can charge it from that charger. It's also powerful enough to charge your smart controller and all the big thirsty things you've got to charge when you're at home and want to get back out in the field. The 65 water has got dual ports on it as well. Again, QC and PD, USB-A and USB-C, but it's a 65 watt charger, which means you can use the PD delivery port, the USB-C port, to charge your laptop while you're charging something else off that USB-A port. The reason I'm mentioning this is you may have seen this new term GAN, which is uh, gallium nitride. And if you haven't heard about that, technology, it's a thousand times or roughly a thousand times more efficient than silicon. So when they build chargers with this GAN technology, they can be a lot smaller, they're going to run a lot cooler, and they're way more efficient. So we've been kind of delaying the release of the 65 watt charger because I wanted to find that was a GAN charger to take advantage of this new technology. So I'll talk more about that in a separate clip, but these kind of innovations around technology, whether it be chargers or batteries or whatever, are just major steps forward. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about batteries today, but that LiPo technology, which basically allowed us to fly these drones for 30, 40 minutes in the air, was invented a long time ago by a professor good enough. It sounds like a strange name, but the gentleman was brilliant. I think he was a Nobel laureate, but he came up with the original LiPo technology, which is what most of the batteries are based on. He's been working on a solid state battery that uses a glass polymer. He's got two versions of it, but a glass polymer that's supposed to give you like 4X or 5X the charging capabilities of the current LiPo. So I'm keeping an eye on that. I'll probably do a clip on it when I get a little bit more time to explain what those technologies mean. But the bottom line is you got a new charger technology, you'll have new battery technology, which means I can charge them faster, they'll last longer in the drone, and that's all good for everybody. So anyway, stay tuned for that. I want to talk a little bit too about sort of, I mentioned in the last update that the government has finally cleared a couple of the DJI drones, and they've, they've let them uh, be used now by government agencies. And I was really upset about that when they banned them because there was a lot of nonsense out there. It seems to be rumors popping up all over the place anymore, and you're not sure who to listen to. People get crazy with these, these rumors that are going around. But the rumor was that China's spying through drones. So DJI, being a Chinese company, is working with the government, and they're going to capture photos and videos of everybody, and they're going to send it back to the mothership in China, and that's going to be scary somehow. Well, the honest truth is, when you peel back the covers of all the drones that are up there flying in the sky today, you'll find that probably 50 or 60 percent of any drone built by anybody has got a ton of Chinese technology in it. So it seemed a little strange to me that they would pick on DJI when all the other major drones have this Chinese technology in it. Well, it turns out they started this program called uh, a Drone Blue, I think it was called Drone Blue SUAS, which was a certification program to look at drones that that committee, and I don't know if there was any engineers on the committee, but that smart committee would decide this drone is good, this drone is bad, and they would sort of let certain drones through and other drones not through. Well, I said at the time, it was interesting that only U.S.-built drones, or primarily U.S.-built drones, were approved, and all the foreign drones, whether it was a French drone, initially Anafi got on there, eventually Parrot did, but, but the foreign-built drones weren't on that list. And that bothered me a lot because if these public agencies are out there rescuing kids or searching in the forest for somebody that got lost or they're monitoring wildfire or the police want to use them to sort of look over the top of a building to see if there's a bad guy down there with a gun, they should be able to use that technology. And it seems strange to me that they were banned. And I did a lot more research on it, and my, my personal opinion is that that was purely sort of an economic conversation. It was purely protectionism, which meant they couldn't compete with the foreign drones, so let's put some draconian rules in place where we eliminate those guys from being able to compete in that market space, and then these companies can build these really expensive drones that aren't quite as sophisticated and sell them to the government agencies. Well, it turns out the study that was just done on all the drones that have been approved have found that they're between 8 and 14 times more expensive than off-the-shelf drones built by DJI and others, and they only give you about 20% of the functionality. So what you're getting is a wildly expensive expensive drone that doesn't do half of the things that the less expensive drones from China can do. And now that they've cleared those drones, I'm really glad that those are going to get back out in those government agencies' hands to be able to fly over that wildfire and find out, you know, where they've got to put the firemen down and fire, fire women down or the fire resources down to put that fire out. Or, you know, if they're trying to rescue a kid who's lost in the woods, 
the more drones, the better as far as I'm concerned. But I find it interesting that I took a lot of grief for that when I talked about this is nonsense about these uh, Chinese drones spying for the you know Chinese government. And people came at me hard and they're like, oh, you, you're making mistakes here. This is definitely true. Turns out it isn't. And it turns out now they've reversed course on that. So that's a really good thing for all of us. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the Autel update. Now, if you're flying an Autel Evo 2, you know there's two versions out. That's where it gets a little confusing. Version one and version two have different chipsets in them. So when the smart controller came out, I was really excited to test it. I have both of the versions of the uh, Evo 2, but the original version one, or I should say rev revision one of that drone. And they came out with that smart controller initially for the revision one, and it was fairly expensive. And I thought, gee, do I buy it and bring it in and test it? Let me talk to my friends over at Autel. If you have the version two, there's a new smart controller coming out that works with that. Now the confusing part is they don't work with each other. It'd be great if the version two work with both revisions of the drone, but it doesn't. So if you've got a version one drone, whether it's the, the 8K or the 6K or the enterprise version of it, you've got to use that Gen 1 controller. If you've got the Gen 2, you've got to use the Gen 2 controller. Well, the good news is I have a Gen 2 drone coming and I have a Gen 2 controller coming to test and I'll be testing those on the channel. I think that controller looks pretty sweet. I think it looks really, really sweet. And I kind of needled them a little bit about what else you got going on. I can't say anything because there's NDAs coming, but expect some interesting things from Wattel in a couple of months. That's all I'll say. So stay tuned to the channel because I'm telling you I'm close to it. And when I can talk about it, I'll talk about it. And until then, I'm going to be under NDA pretty quick. I'm putting pen to paper and I'll be able to investigate all the stuff that's going on. But I love the fact that there are other companies out there that are competing for your attention around drones. All right, the last thing I want to talk about, actually two more quick things. I've talked a little bit about the Drone Valley. I'm going to call it a team or I'm going to call it a club, but basically a group of people that want to join the Drone Valley family on a more regular basis, that want to support the channel. So we're going to pop up a subscriber button where you can hit the subscriber button. There'll be different levels of, of ways you can subscribe to the channel some contributions in there if you choose to do that but essentially what it'll have are different levels where you can get in maybe just a supporter then maybe you need a little more help on a regular basis so we give you an email address maybe we're going to do live casting or maybe we give you a phone number you can reach us so if you've got questions about drones you've, you've got in at that level so you get a phone number but all of that is going to involve live streaming now i've never done live streaming as a drone valley product i've been on a lot of live streams and i have a lot of fun doing that but i'm just so busy i haven't had a chance to actually get the studio cleaned up and set up and get the computer set up with the cameras and everything I've been working really hard this whole month to get that done because I want to start live streaming. And what we're going to do is if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, do that. There's a link below where you can do that. Once you subscribe to that newsletter, what we're going to do is before we do the live stream, I'll send a note out, put a date and a time there. And if you want to dial into the live stream, you can. It'll be moderated. So if you come to the live stream, what I'd like to do with it is explain things. So if there are topics that people are asking about, I'd love to talk about them on the live stream. But live on that stream, you can also ask questions. It'll be moderated and we'll try to get to all the questions that are answered because I like talking a lot on live streams with other people about what might be happening or what's going on here and what do you think this is going to look like. But more importantly, I don't think there's a lot of live streams out there that actually answer your questions. So if you're flying a drone, there's a million questions about how certain things work and how do I get this thing done and how'd you do that shot? Well, the live stream is going to sort of answer those questions for you. So we're going to do our best. So make sure you subscribe to that newsletter so you're, you're notified once we're going to do the live stream. And then the last thing I want to talk about, which is drone related, but not our kind of drones, is the Ingenuity drone up on Mars. <laughs> I've not talked about this on the channel, but I'm one of those nerds when Elon Musk puts a rocket up, I'm in tears. When I see Bezos and I see Branson go up in their space planes, I'm glued to the TV watching them. My fingers crossed that it's going to work out okay for them because that level of innovation sort of paves the road for what's coming down the road. So for my kids and for your kids, that's the future. We're going to land on Mars. Well, we've got a drone up there. Now, up until now, it's been a terrestrial investigation, which means they've got rovers on the ground that can run around and stuff, but it can get stuck in sand. It can't get over that hill because it's got to charge its batteries. The minute you put a drone up to 80 feet, 60 feet up in the air, your perspective of that landscape changes. So now that drone can let NASA know hey, there's something really interesting over there. We think we saw a Martian running into a little little cave over there. Why don't you put the rover over there? I don't think they've seen any Martians, or if they have, we haven't heard about them. But anyway, the, the drone gives them that perspective. So I'm not only excited about the possibilities that drone presents, I'm excited as a drone flyer that that technology is so pervasive that a smart team of brilliant engineers at NASA decided, we're going to build a drone. And you know what? It's going to be difficult to fly it because gravity's different. The air thickness is different up there. The viscosity of the air is going to impact that. So to build a drone that can fly in those conditions, I'm telling you the first time it lifted off, I'm telling you, I had tears streaking down my eyes watching that because I, I just am blown away by technology in general and I have a hard time 
hanging on for dear life with the pace of change around this technology. So I hope you're enjoying that as well. I think we're into our eighth or 10th flight at this point, and they were only supposed to do four or five and then shut it down. And they were like, you know what? It's flying pretty good. So let's have it do this. Let's try and race across the landscape a little further and see what we can discover over there. And I just love that kind of adventure. So anyway, that's it for today. I hope you guys are enjoying these. I love talking about technology and so much happens in the course of seven to 10 days. I try to pack it all in. I know these are a little longer than the normal clips that we do, but I want to give you as much information I can about the things we're looking at and things that we find interesting. And hopefully you're finding them interesting as well. So thanks an awful lot for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down the bottom and make sure you join the newsletter too so you know when that drone valley live broadcast is going to take place and until next time i hope you guys are enjoying this beautiful weather and happy flying mm -hmm.